My name is Max Banfield. Welcome to my talk. I did 100% of the research and invention of the world's first standing computer desk between 1975 and 1998. However, since then, other individuals and organisations have stolen my copyright by giving the false impression or actually claiming that they did the research and inventing. So in this YouTube video, I'll explain how that happened. When I was young, I learned how to solve problems by using facts, evidence and proof. But I didn't learn that solving one problem could result in many others. I also learned about the basic of copyright law and that it was designed to provide an incentive for individuals to do original work to advance civilization by improving or replacing old ideas and methods which had been used on a daily basis before. However, I didn't learn about the history of copyright law until it became necessary many years later. In that regard, after the printing press was invented and improved, it gave printer owners the ability to copy one book a million times. But the printer owners weren't good writers, so they paid royalties to authors who were, and both made a profit, where the author gained a 5% royalty for each book and the printer could derive a profit from the other 95% of product value. Notably, without the original book, the printer couldn't make any profit at all. But then some printers became greedy and published books without paying royalties and kept 100% of the profit for themselves. For example, in some cases they simply translated best-selling books in other countries into English and made guaranteed profit. So some authors went broke and lived in poverty and committed suicide. But others, such as Mark Twain, Jules Verne, W.S. Gilbert and more, protested, as can be seen in this illustration, from Puck in 1886. But where the publisher is stamping his foot on a book called Law and saying the law says he can do it, therefore there is nothing they can do to stop him. He was using the law as his excuse for stealing. So the, the authors eventually had the copyright law improved at the Berne Convention in 1911. And if someone wants to use another person's words or invention, as in patent law, one, they have to acknowledge the author's name, two, they are required to ask permission to use it, and three, they are required to pay the author licence fees and a 5% royalty for each item or derivative of it. Those rights apply until... 70 years after the author dies. There are other aspects of copyright law. For example, you cannot make minor changes to the words of a song from la di da da to la di 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 and claim that it's different. And you cannot use the chorus or tune from another song and write different words to make it appear different. Because if you do, the original author can sue you. And the same principle applies under patent law for inventions. In the meantime, this is what happened to my life. By the age of 25, I'd become very ill, but there were no signs of disease on x-rays or CAT scan, so my doctors and specialists couldn't explain it, and the medications weren't effective. So it became obvious to me that millions of doctors and thousands of universities hadn't been able to solve the problem for thousands of years. But I wanted it solved in my lifetime. So I decided to start my own research. Within five years, I was able to notice that sometimes leaning forward to tie up my shoelaces or bending forward or leaning towards the desk caused my kidneys to ache or I'd feel faint and dizzy or my abdomen would ache or my breathing became difficult, etc. So I wrote an essay called The Matter of Framework and it was published in the Australasian Nurses Journal in June 1980. I've since called it The Posture Theory. Now, one of the reasons I sent my essays off to publications instead of leaving them at home unpublished was so I could establish that I'd solve these problems and make it difficult for other people to come on later and say they'd solved it because I knew they couldn't. So you can see this diagram from that article that shows how downward pressure on the chest and abdomen and the lungs shown by arrows It can cause those symptoms.
Uh, and uh, that was actually published in that journal article, the Australasian Nurses Journal, was not the Australian Nurses Journal. And then I was walking through the Tea Tree Plaza shopping centre one day, <coughs> and a young bloke was um, drawing portraits. And I thought, they're pretty good. And he's charging $5. So I said, can you draw my diagram for $5? And he said, yes, he could. Well, thought he drew it neatly. And uh, ultimately, that is the diagram you can see there. Now, you see in this diagram, I've shown it flipped from left to right. And you can see how this particular person has virtually traced it. The symptoms are much the same, but he's typed them out. And instead of saying the posture theory, he said poor sitting posture. Instead of giving me the credit as the author in 1980, he said it's copyrightbreathing.com. That's blatant uh, plagiarism. And you can see here that I have scrolled it over his to show that what he's, and, show, and made mine slightly transparent to show how he's actually traced it, and made few slight changes to the symptoms and slight changes to the diagram. For example, there's a, a computer screen instead of a piece of paper. And this is a quote from his website, and it says this, copyright 1997 to 2014. Remember, it's mine since 1980. This is what he said. All texts and images on this website are protected by international copyright laws and may only be used by consent of Michael Grant White. He not only stole my design, he then says, you've got to ask him for permission to use it. And anyone has to, like me, it's my diagram, and he reckons I'm going to ask him permission to use it or I'm breaking the law. Don't think so. So uh, that is blatant theft of my research. Now you can see this other <coughs> article in the Washington Post where a team of um, individuals, uh, so-called experts, have, say, uh, have copied my diagram. You can see it's quite obvious to me since I did the 23 years of research and I've just copied it. So I'd like to explain a few things to you. You can see the diagram is much the same. You can see the symptoms that they've listed on both sides and they're the same if you have a look at them. And all the other problems you can see published in my book. And if you ask me where those symptoms are published in my book, I can actually show you different page numbers, etc. So they've copied it, <clears throat> and instead of saying the posture theory, they've said the health hazards of sitting. And instead of saying Emma Banfield is the author, Max Banfield, they're saying it's teams of international experts. So that's a plagiarism of my research as well. Now, let me go back a bit. To 1993, I was diagnosed with cancer and told my body was riddled with it in my neck, chest and abdomen and that I had only two months to live and no hope of a cure and that I should write out my will. Well, this is a, the diagnosis that was uh, provided to me detailing all the different cancerous tumours. And it was a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, I went on from that point and I started publishing a book called The Posture Theory. It started off as about 20 pages and went all the way through to 1,000 pages. Then about 1998, I'd been adding different platforms to the height of my desk and different platforms of different angles. And one day I was able to type for several hours without paying. I've been in all sorts of problems. I could barely sit at a desk for 10 minutes up until then. 
and uh, write one paragraph at a time, which is why people criticise my writing style. But in 1998, I was able to type without paying for several hours. So what it, I did was I drew a diagram of that position because I knew that the illness that I had also affected 300 million other people. And I knew this idea, this method would be worth a fortune. So I didn't tell anyone until about a year later when I published, after I published my book. And the first illustration is a diagram of a man standing at a desk and looking at a computer screen. And uh, that's what people now copy. Well, that's the world's first standing computer desk. It's not just a desk. I didn't just put a computer on a desk. This is 23 years of experiment. And uh, uh, you notice that uh, there's not much detail there. But that's what people copy. That's what furniture companies copy. And uh, the important other details I left out just in case they decided to um, copy it and call it theirs. They'll never, ever get the results that I get because all they're doing is copying. They don't understand the process. They don't know the full details and they'll never get it right until they do pay me royalties. Now have a look at this diagram. Also, it's made up of the diagrams in my book. And uh, the one top left is 1980 and then the others came later, years or decades later. And what I show is that leaning forward compresses the chest and abdomen cause aches and pains and illnesses. And in the 19th century, I discovered women got exactly the same symptoms by compressing their waist with tight corsets. The 19th century, women didn't know that it was corsets causing their problems. And 20th century, desk workers didn't know what was causing their problems until I figured it out. And you can see the role of diagrams. from my book and, and below it you can see there's an obvious copy by technology news website and they can do that photo in a couple of hours they copy my 23 years of research experiments in a couple of hours and it says standing desk starter guide do's and don'ts what to expect from your first standing desk they got all that from my books and my website and they're giving the false impression that it's due to their knowledge or wisdom or something. Well, they had nothing to do with it. They just copied everything. Now, I'd like to show you a photo of my desktop editions which evolved from thousands of experiments. And what I'd like you to notice is that it's changed in a very short space of time, te technology was advancing. And you can see there two LCD flat screens. You can also see in the foreground a G4 tower, a Mac, Apple Mac G4 tower. You can also see quite a few details uh, of how complex that desk was and how complicated the experiments were and bear in mind, I had 300 medical books at the time. I've been studying medicine for 20, for 23 years. And I've left out important details. So if people buy desks from the furniture companies, they're going to have problems because the furniture companies just copy what they see. They don't know all the details. So it'd be easy for me, the day I invented that desk, I knew the benefits be easy for me to make a thousand variations of my own design. But that's just what furniture companies are for, to reproduce things in the millions. It's not their job to do medical research, not their job to invent things. Um, but um, any manufacturer could um, do that legally by paying me 5% royalty for each test, but they're not paying me. Uh, I've been, I recently saw an example just how easy it is to copy my design. Because there's a school in Hong Kong which was offering a prize to the child who could make the best standing desk in their class. And I think they're just given a week 
Maybe the prize was a bag of jelly beans or something. I don't know. But that's how easy it is. And yet, furniture companies are claiming they invented it. Now, this is a photo of my desk. And on the right, you can see a child's mechano set, a toy set. And they could make a standing desk very similar to mine, the desktop with leverage mechanisms. For example, they could get their mother's ironing board and put my desktop additions on top of it. And then they, if they wanted to disguise what they'd done, they could chop the ends of the iron book board off and the mother would come and say, where's my ironing board, Billy? And Billy's, I don't know, mother. But of course you can see... The kids copy my design and the mother can see the kids using her writing board to make that design height adjustable. Here's another example. This is a miniature um, clothesline, the wind-up type, the hills hoist type. And... Uh, Freddy can put my design on top and call it Freddy's wind-up desk. And there's many adults have done that and they called it their, do their desk and their design. They didn't invent the wind-up device and they didn't in invent the top part. So my desk design could be copied by first-year design students uh, at university. It'd be easy. And they can make them electronically height adjustable. There's nothing new about that. They haven't done anything with the height adjustable mechanism. That's not there. They haven't, they didn't do the desktop bit and none of it is theirs. And combining two of other people's invention to make one, it's not uh, an invention. It's just uh, exploitation of other people. And they make it look, uh, that some of them will put a treadmill underneath to make it look as if they put a lot of time and effort and thought into it. Oh, you've got to move as well as alternate between sitting and standing. You've got to move your legs. Well, they make it look as if it's impressive, but again, they're just copying the things that I've said. And I don't want to say any more about that because I don't want to give them a clues about what's right or wrong. If they're going to take the credit and the money, let them make the mistakes. If you want to buy from them, good luck. Bear in mind they're only furniture manufacturers, not they know nothing about health. Now the individual or company then rushes off to take out a patent in two weeks. And they call it their intellectual property? I don't think so. Then they call themselves the inventor, the founder. Well they say it's their brainchild to put all this stuff in their office. Their brainchild? I don't think so. And they say they got the idea from a friend or a survey? Well, they learn all about bloody disease. They learn all about disease. It takes 50 years to cure from a 12-month survey. There's a lot of things they say that are total nonsense. Or well, they say they got the idea from Leonardo da Vinci, the genius who lived centuries before computers were invented and all he needed on his desk was some place for his quill pens and his paintbrushes. He didn't invent this desk. And they didn't have a sit-stand desk revolution 500 years ago. But that, the companies who are using my designs want you to believe they did. And then they could say, it's out of copyright. It's not out of copyright. It wasn't invented by Da Vinci. It was invented by me. So this is a photo of my desktop dis edition soon after I invented it, 1998. And this is a company that's apparently selling a billion dollars worth of these desks a year. And it's a mechano set style of item that they've got design students from uni and first year uni or something. To do. Very easy to design. I've flipped it to show how closely it resembles my design. It's a copy of the basic parts. It doesn't go into details because I didn't publish the details. They don't know it, so they can't copy it. Have a look at the additions of mine on the left here and see how closely it resembles the design on the right. which is a copy where they've tried to make it look different. But it's obviously the same.
Now, $700,000 worth of desktop accessories were sold to the U.S. White House, where President Barack Obama said he's getting aboard the standing desk bandwagon. Not 1998 when I invented it. In 2014, half the furniture companies had copied it. And Malcolm Turnbull, the Australian Prime Minister, used the standing desk with pride as a sign of his respect for creativity, innovation and excellence in 2015, 17 years after I invented it, and he's not giving me the credit. <clears throat> now, the desk design which I invented to solve my own health problems that no one else can solve in 2,000 years of history is now being copied by thousands of companies to help millions of other patients who nobody could help before. As you can see from this diagram, if you go on the net, you'll see probably 10 times as many. They're copying my standing computer desk prototype to sell it to millions of large businesses by using my research as a basis for conducting education lessons on health and productivity benefits as a sales pitch. And they're paying people who copy my ideas and my... Um, research, they're paying them to run education programs for businesses. So the people who are running those education talks are stealing my research and pretending it's their own. The Australian government has also passed occupational health and safety laws to reimburse the fees of physiotherapists and doctors who prescribe standing tests to office workers who need them for health reasons. The physiotherapist didn't do the research. Doctors couldn't solve the problem. They're reimbursing their fees and not paying me 5% royalty. And I'm saving the government a fortune because each person who uses a standing desk is improving their health and therefore reducing national health care costs. Other people, other companies are running Get Australia standing campaigns, Get America standing campaigns, Get UK standing campaigns, Get Mexico standing campaigns. Uh, to get standing desks into every home, school and office in the world. Presumably get them so widely distributed that no one will ever believe that I'm the one and only inventor. And people think, oh, it's invented in America somewhere. Oh, it's invented by teams of professors somewhere. No, it's invented by me. No one else had anything to do with it. The universities have previously teaching their students that the cause was psychological and due to worry, fear and stress, are now saying our panel of experts is uh, <coughs> providing the world-first guidelines on long to sit, stand, move and use standing desks to improve health, happiness and productivity of workers. After reviewing all the research on the subject, mine was the only one until other people started copying it. And they mentioned everyone else's copy and not my original work. There are reports on the great standing desk debate of the past two years, which is discussing the health benefits of using standing desks. In 2015, furniture companies who told me that nobody asked for standing desks so there's no profit to be made from manufacturing them in 1998 are now saying, we are the world's leading authorities on the new sit-stand desk revolution. And they're making a billion dollar profit each year by selling to Apple, Google and Facebook headquarters. Those who copy me are breaking the letter, the ethics and the very purpose of copyright law. They're breaking the law, which is to ensure that the original developer gets a majority of the profit and not those who come later and reproduce it in the millions while leaving the producer me with nothing. They are not advancing civilization. They are turning intellectual property law into a joke where my 20 years of research can be sabotaged in two weeks by two, two week patents taken out by thousands of Johnny come lately's. The people are just copying me. They're making all the profit and I'm getting nothing. That's ridiculous. I estimated that I'm outnumbered by at least 50,000 to one by those who couldn't solve the problem because they didn't know there was a problem. They didn't care and they didn't even try. But they want the credit and the prestige and the money that is due to my research. However, I've become accustomed to solving problems. 
And one is that the public and the users of Standing Desk don't know that my research and invention has brought about this major change. I am therefore producing this YouTube video to tell the public and the Standing Desk users the facts. And maybe you can ensure that those who are profiting from my research in the future do so in an honest and ethical way by acknowledging my name and paying me royalties. Maybe then I'll publish some more essays on what to do about health problems. Thank you.